In this video, I want to explain why I think Git is so important. I want to show you how to install it onto your computer, and I want to teach you the basics. I'm sure something like this must have happened to you. You're working on a document, and I'm not necessarily talking about code here, it could be any document. And you save what you think at the time is the final version of that document. You call it document final. And then you re-look at it the next day, or you show it to a teacher, or a professor, or a colleague, or a friend and you need to make some changes. Now, what do you do? Do you save over the original document, in which case you lose the original, or do you create another version? And you probably create another, another version because you want to preserve that first document. So you get document final two. And then that process happens again. You get document final three, and then document final four. And you keep saving different versions of this file as it changes. And then perhaps you want to add a new section to it. So they're not just small changes now, you want to make bigger changes. And so then you have to have final version five, amendment one, and then final version five, amendment two, and so on and so forth. And gradually this document has lots and lots of different versions of itself. And then perhaps after 15, 16 or 17 versions, you want to go back to one that you remember having that you really liked that was somewhere around version seven but you can't remember exactly what it is, and you don't know by this time what different amendments each version of this document has. This is where version control comes in incredibly useful, because what it enables you to do is just have one document. You don't have to say 15 or 20 versions of the same document. You have one document. And what Git will do is track that document as changes occur. And each time you make a significant change to the document, you can get Git to take a snapshot of the document and you can add notes to that snapshot explaining exactly what it is that you did uh, with that change and why you're taking a snapshot at that point. And so Git gives you, it's like a camera for, uh, for your document. It gives you the evolution of the document. And if after 15 or 20 or 100 uh, updates of this document, you want to go back to version 15, you can do that and you can see what, what changes version 15 had. Um, and that's very useful. And not only that, you can revert back to the document as it was at the state of 15 or at 16 or at 20 or whatever iteration you want to go back to. So it's like a little, it gives you unlimited undos for one document. You don't have to create lots of versions of the same document. You can go back and see how that document was and, um, and what it looked like at that particular point in time. The other thing it enables you to do is something called branching. So if you want to take the document off in a particular direction, but you don't want to, uh, that to affect the master version, of the document. You can develop a, a branch of the document knowing that you're not touching the master, the version that you don't want to change. And so with coding, for example, that can be incredibly useful because you can keep the code that you know works. And then if you want to develop little branches of that code, you can do so and you won't damage the master version of that. And it's also really useful if you want to collaborate as well, because Different people can work on different branches and when they save it, they can add notes so you know exactly what's going on with that document. That's why it's incredibly useful. And then of course it makes you already, it sets you up to be able to push that document onto GitHub where you can keep your documents, your code um, in perpetuity and you can share that code with anyone that you want. So that's why it is incredibly useful. And that's why, you know, aside from it being essential if you want to get a job, that's why I would urge you to learn it. And it's comparatively easy to learn. So let's look now at getting it installed on your computer. What I want you to do is if you're on a Mac or a Linux system is go to git-scm.com. And if you're on a Windows system, then go to gitforwindows.org. Follow the instructions, install it on your computer, and then we're gonna configure it. So now it's all installed, I want you to go to your terminal if you're on a Mac, and if you're on Windows, click on the application that you have just installed, wait for it to load, and type git hyphen hyphen version. Now that will tell you what version of git you're using, and that will show you that git has been installed. Git has its own help documents, and to access those, you type git hyphen hyphen help, 
and if you do that you will see the manual come up uh, and that has a list of all of the commands and tells you and explains in great detail what they do so don't forget that you have that too. Now let's configure git and we're going to set the username, the user email and the editor and to do that you type git config hyphen hyphen global followed by user.name and then quotation marks. In those quotation marks, put the name that you want to use. Then you type git config hyphen hyphen global user.email and then in the quotation marks you put your email. Now if you have a GitHub account that email has to, has to match the email you use for your GitHub account. And finally we're going to type git config hyphen hyphen global core.editor and in the quotation marks, you're going to put the editor that you want to use in order to edit your files. Now, it might be Nano if you're on a Mac, or it might be Notepad if you're on a Windows system, or it can be a code editor like Atom, any editor that you like to use. Press return and you're done. All right, so let's use Git now. So in that terminal, you're going to type make directory or MKDIR, and then you're going to make a directory. You can call it anything you like. So MKDIR, why not call it Giles? So make directory MKDIR Giles. And then you're going to move into that directory. You're going to change directories. So CD Giles, you're now in the directory Giles. And now you're going to use your first Git command. You're going to type Git G-I-T followed by init, I-N-I-T. So you're going to initialize the repository. Do that. And now we're going to create a file that we can track. So you type touch, T-O-U-C-H, and then the file name. So why not call it test.txt? And now you want to tell Git that you're going to track this file. And to do that, you type git add, and then the name of the file. So it's going to be git add, test.txt. Now what this does is it stages the file. So it tells Git this is the version of the file that I want to commit, but it doesn't actually commit the file yet. And to commit the file, you type git commit hyphen m and then you add a message saying what it is that you've done during this set of changes. Well, we haven't really done anything other than create a file. So let's put that in the message. Create file test press return and now you have a version of a file it's an empty file that is now being tracked by git if you now type git log you will see that git has logged that change that we've made when we created the file now you can make more changes to this file and when you're ready you can stage it using the same command that we already know git add and then when you're ready to commit, you can type git commit and put a message as to what it is that you're committing and why, what changes that you've made. And the file will evolve like this. And each time you want to have a look at all the changes that you've made, you can type git log and that will keep a record of all the changes that you have made and you can see how that file is evolving. Now that starts you off with Git. It's not a full tutorial, but it gets you going. There are lots of other things that you need to look into. You need to look at Git status. You need to look at Git diff. You need to look at Git reset. You need to look at Git branch and you need to look at Git checkout. Have a look at those commands and get to know them. But you can see that Git has been quite easy to install, it's been easy to configure and easy to start using. So you're well on your way now with Git, you just need to explore some of those other commands. Good luck with it, let me know how you get on. I'll see you next time, bye. If you're looking for a longer course on Git and you'd like to learn Python too, then I'd recommend you take a look at my course on Udemy. It covers Python and Git. It's aimed at complete beginners and I try to teach it in the way that I wish I'd been taught when I was learning to code. Um, it's got some really good reviews. Why don't you go and take a look and see if it's the course for you?